Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to disable printing in your Microsoft Access databases. Today's question comes from Lorenzo in Downers Grove, Illinois, one of my Platinum members. Lorenzo says, I've got a user that likes to hit Control P to print reports. Instead of using my print button, which also runs code to mark invoices as having been printed. I've already disabled the ribbon and the right click menu using the techniques you've shown in your security seminar and developer classes. However, is there any way to disable control P and force him to have to use my print button? I still want to allow them to be able to preview a report before printing it so they don't waste paper, but I want to force them to use my print button to actually send the, the report to the printer. I get it. I do this in a lot of my databases too. I, I want the user to be a, a you know be allowed to see the the preview so they can look it over and make sure it's okay before they actually waste paper by sending it down to the printer and ink. Of course, we know ink is expensive too, right? But I do want them to have to click my print button because you can make another button for them, like you know mark this invoice as printed or mark this order as shipped. But people don't click it. So I get it, Lorenzo, he, he wants to make it so that when the user prints the actual invoice, it marks it as it's been printed. I get it. Okay, so let's let's see how we can disable the different ways to print stuff in Microsoft Access without having to use your button. Okay, because you can do it with VBA code very easily. So what are the different ways to print a report? Once, Let's say once you've got it previewed, right? Because I've shown you guys in a million uh, different videos how to actually preview or print a report. It's just do command open report and then the report name and then how you want to print it, right? You can send it right to the printer or you can open it up in preview mode. But once you put it in preview mode, what's to stop the user from printing it right from there? How, how can you print it? Well, you can hit control P on the keyboard. All right, that's one thing we have to disable. There's the right click menu which is this thing, right? You right click on the report and you go to print. That's going to bypass your button too. There's the ribbon. There's always, you know, stuff. The, the print preview ribbon pops up anytime you go into preview. And then of course, there's your own button. So what we want to do is make our own button and disable these three things. Have a button where they can preview it, right? But they can't print it from there. And then you'll make another button that they can actually print it from. And I've also seen companies that wanted to um, completely disable printing altogether. They don't, they, they want to have reports so they can send them as PDFs or whatever, but they don't want stuff being printed and leaving the building. So I get it. But just keep in mind, anything you can screen capture with the screen capture utility, you can, you can print that too. So there's, I mean, that's, you know. All right. So let's, in this lesson, let's start off by seeing how we can disable control P on the keyboard. This is of course a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, that means if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this guy. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. And also go watch this one too, my if then video. We're gonna use an if then statement. These are both free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. Go watch them and come on back. All right, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can grab a copy off my website if you want to. And in here, I've got a customer form and customers can have orders. And on your order, you got a button right here to preview the invoice for that order. And as you can see, you get the print preview ribbon. You can right click on here and go to print, or you can hit control P on the keyboard, and this thing comes up, the print dialog. This is what we're going to disable first, this guy. Okay, how do we do that? Well, we have to intercept the keystrokes in this report. So how do we do that? Well, we go to design view, we bring up the properties for this report, now on the event tab, you're going to find a couple of keyboard related events. There's key up, key down, and key press. We're gonna use key down. Key down fires when a key is pressed. Key up is fired when that key is released. And then key press is something kind of different where you can actually you know, get the, the ASCII character code that was pressed. We don't want that for now. We're gonna focus on key down. Oh, key, key down. Oh, key, oh, key, key down, <laughs> key down. <laughs> Now, here's a tricky thing, and a lot of people don't know this, but in order for this event to fire on either a form or a report, you have to turn this key preview property on. 
Very important step. Don't forget that. Otherwise, none of this will work. Okay. Why this doesn't default to yes, it's a long story. Um, but now that we have that, we can go to the key down event. Go to the dot, dot, dot. That's going to bring up your VBA code builder. All right, here we are. Now, the key down event gets two bits of information. The key code, which is a code representing the key that was pressed, and the shift property. Shift will tell you whether control, shift, or alt was also pressed. Okay? So watch this. I'm going to just type in here message box key code. So it's going to message box whatever key was pressed. Okay, that's all for now, right? Save it, come back out here, let's close this and open the report again. Okay, now make sure you get focus on here. I'm gonna press the P key, all right, 80. So P is character 80, all right? I'm gonna press the A key and oh, see, okay, we didn't, we're still gonna get this running because we're not interrupting this at all, which we're gonna interrupt this in a minute, so hit cancel. Okay, now I'm gonna hit the A key, all right? A is 65. Okay, see that? Every character, that's the ASCII representation for it. Every character has its own key. Okay? All right, if I press the number 1, it's got a key code, 49. If I press A, it's got a key code, 65, and so on. Okay? And if you press P, which it turns out just P by itself also opens up the print dialog box. I don't know when they changed this. All right, control P does it, and also just P by itself. So that's new to me. And I tried it in a couple different databases and it looks like that's the case. So that they must have changed that recently. Okay, so we have to intercept both P and control P. Now, back to our code. All right, in order to intercept these key codes, we're gonna, rep we're gonna use the key code in here. So we're gonna say now, if key code equals 80, then we're gonna say message box P was pressed and then end if, okay? So now it should ignore everything except if the P is pressed. All right, you ready? Let's come back over here. Always a good idea to close and reopen these things, right? Okay, I'm gonna press A, nothing. B, nothing. D, nothing. P, there it is, P was pressed. And it still fires up that thing, all right? Likewise, if I press, uh, let's say, Control P. Look at that, P was pressed also, okay? Now, normally, if you wanted to, if you wanted to get just Control P, then you'd come in here and say and Shift equals two. All right, Shift being one is the Shift key was pressed. Shift being two means the Control key was pressed, and Shift being three means the Alt key was pressed. But we don't even need that because we're going to trap all instances of P being hit. Alt P, Control P, and Shift P. Any of those. Okay. Now, instead of saying the P was pressed, and here we're going to say, don't press control P, use the print button instead. All right, the print button that you have put on the form. Okay? Now, before that happens, I want to cancel the key code. I want to set the key code equals zero. That's going to effectively stop whatever is going on in the background. Make sense? Okay, ready? Save it. Let's give it a quick debug compile. Come back over here. Let's close that and reopen it. Okay, now come over here. Hit A, B, nothing. Hit P. Ah, don't press Control P. Use the print button instead. Oh, okay. Hit OK. And now, see, no, notice that. No dialog. Because we set the key code to zero, and that will stop the key from continuing. Key down, the key down event actually runs before the key is processed. All right, let's make sure control P works too. Control P. All right, don't, don't press P. Use the print button instead. Set it to zero. See, maybe alt P. Let's see. Yep, that's, we're shutting down all instances of P, folks. All of the P's are stopped. So if, so if alt P is something on the menu that you want, then that's going to be blocked too. But if you want to block just control P, like I said, I don't know when they did that. It used to be just control P printed something, but now apparently just hitting P by itself will, will launch the print dialog box. That's new, that's new for me. All right, we can close that. So essentially what you'll do is you'll give the user two buttons here. You'll give them a print preview button and then an actual print button. And the actual print button will be the one that 
sends it to the printer when they're when they're all set for it. It'll open up the print dialog box. All right, and if you look at the button, we build this in my invoicing uh, video. I'll put a link to that down below if you want to learn how this was built. Uh, we refresh the record first, so it saves everything to the table in case you have any changes. And then it's do command open report, the name of the report, and then AC view preview. Okay, AC view preview. There's a button. There's different ones in here. Preview gives you print preview. Normal opens up the print dialog and sends it right to the printer. Okay, and then there's all you know, there's all kinds of other stuff in here too. All right, well, we're gonna go back to preview, and you just make a second button to actually do the printing. Okay, so we've covered Control P or just regular P. There's still two more ways your user can print this thing though. They can use the right click menu or they can use the ribbon. All right, when you open this thing up, you get this. There's the print dialog right there. Or you can go right click and then print. How do we shut these off? Well, we'll cover the right click menu in tomorrow's video, part two. So tune in tomorrow, same bad time, same bad channel. Or if you're a member, you can watch it right now because members get to watch stuff as soon as it's made. You don't got to wait for it to be released to the general public. It's one of the benefits of being a member. And then in part three, I will show you how to disable the print preview ribbon across the top of the screen. So that's all coming up. And I also cover a lot of stuff like this in my security seminar where I show you how to disable menus and create uh, uh, custom workflows and, and control who can do what in your database. We set up passwords, all that good stuff. So that's covered in my security seminar. And in my Access Developer 44 class, I'll show you how to build custom ribbons. And then we continue on with right-click menus and all that good stuff. So lots of stuff in my full courses. But this is part one for disabling printing. Part two will cover the right-click menu. Part three will cover the ribbon. That's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow for part two. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, Level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. 
So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.